All right, so at this stage, you ladies and gentlemen should have your history of photography CUA photograph taken and saved. You should also have a copy saved to your H drive. It's the one in your H drive. That's the one that should be edited. You do not want to go to the P drive and edit the one that we had in the history of photography folder we put in today. So again, please, if you don't have an extra copy, copy it from the P drive, put it in your H drive. I know that's a lot of letters, but I'm sure you can fix, figure it out or let me know if you can't. At this stage, you're going to have that file open. I want to remind you, this is a document that we have looked at quite a bit when we're editing photographs. We talked about a light edit, just looking at your copying of your layers, adding in your adjustments with your levels, hue saturation, cropping, and then saving. Now, the other part I wanted to remind you, some of you know how to use adjustment layers versus a direct edit to a layer. Adjustment layers are perfectly fine, but there are some things that we might need to work on with you to figure out how to use them at certain times in the best way possible, okay? Now, for today, however, we are going to look, let me zoom, we're going to look at what exactly we're going to edit on this CUA photo. First of all, we need to look at the color. Is it a black and white? Is, excuse me, is it a color or is it what I would call like a weird color? Like in the late 60s and 70s, the, the film photographs had a little bit of like a golden yellow hue to them. This is what you're going to look at to fix it. So you're going to open it up in Photoshop. Very first thing we do is Control J. Control J makes a copy of your layer, so you always have one original layer on the bottom. I work on that copy. Okay, so if I'm looking at color, I can go ahead, image adjust, and I go to hue saturation. Now in here, I may need a black and white. A number of you ladies and gentlemen will need a black and white for this because you took a black and white photo. You're going to grab that saturation slider. You're going to slide it all the way down. That's a black and white photo. Now, if it's a very dull color, you may find that sliding it just a little, like that's quite beautiful. You may find that matches up with exactly what you need to do for this particular master copy. You may also find that you need to make it, let me put it all the way back at zero. You may, uh, you may need to make it a sepia or sepia tone, like those brown old-fashioned ones right there, colorize, and you're going to move the slider until you get to a brownish tone. In this case, it happens to be all the way over here. You can then saturate it more. Maybe I might move it. No, I'm, I'm better off over here, actually. I might then work with the saturation level and maybe make it a little bit more dull. So that's exactly what you would need for a sepia or sepia tone brown photograph or a very vintage one. When we're working on altering our colors, you can also image adjustments, hue saturation. You can shift your colors by going to hue and slightly moving them. This is like an early morning sunlight and this is more of a sunset. You can shift those colors by moving that slider around as needed. All right. Now, some of you have found that you need to make yours have sort of an overall idea of a color on top. You may need to go to your curves. So on curves, I can again grab this guy and I can move it over. I can select a red channel and I can increase the frequency of that particular value and how it's placed inside of there. I can increase that by moving different parts of this. And you'll see that it increases and decreases at a lot of different, um, in a lot of different places. Some very unhappy. In that case, I would do this. I'm going to go ahead and cancel. And I'm going to go ahead and try it one more time. Oh. And I'm going to go back in there. I'm going to go to my red. I might go ahead and move this around to get rid of a little bit of that reddish turn, uh, color hue, or I could increase it a little bit. So that is maybe what matches up better with my master copy. So as I look at my list, 
I have edited, showed you black and white and sepia. I've shown you color and I've showed you how to change it to maybe one of those strange offbeat colors. Now we move to quality. As we look at quality, we're looking at number one, is it clear? Is it blurry? Is it grainy? Before 2000, most photographs were taken with film. Film, just like we have um, pixels in digital world, film used this stuff called grain, and grain is like little teeny tiny dots. Some of you will need to add grain to your photograph to make it match up to the original. So when we're matching, I am asking for you to make a copy of that layer that you just edited again. This was my before. This is my subtle change for after. It's just a little bit warmer if you can see that switch. Now we're going to go to a new section that's brand new for you. This brand new section is filter, noise, and adding noise. So we're going to add this thing called noise. Now on here though, there's a lot of options for you. The amount, if you add a lot of noise, you can see it looks like a really nasty snowstorm. Obviously, that's not what we want, okay? When we go into distribution, do we want it a uniform overall like this? Or do we want it to look more like this, where it's more concentrated in the darker areas and lighter in the lighter areas? And finally, do we want it monochromatic or regular? In that case, if I have monochromatic, you'll see if I can zoom in, all of my little tiny boxes or my grain or my noise are all values of one color. In this case, they are all different values. So monochromatic, mono is the prefix meaning one, chroma, chromatic in reference to a color. Generally, we are going to see a lot of monochromatic, but you can go to some of the other uh, if that works out better for you. So again, if I overdo it, it looks really weird. If I underdo it, I end up with a problem. It doesn't show up. I zoom in, take a look at it. You can now see my grain, which before did not exist. So again, those are some of the ways that you're going to go ahead and um, have that piece done.